speak. This is quite this is quite the antiques collection. Unusual relic indeed. The stag trophy stares outward with dull glass eyes, inscrutable and a little disquieting.
welcome him as he welcomes you. So much talk of promises, yet so few promises kept. It's behind the ground. Our black, our globes, they glide over flats and shops. Where they go, they. The music swells.
My fingers are yours. Direct them. The echoes of a distant... If you think the master loves you more than he loves me, then, Dot, you're a bigger idiot than you look. Master's the master. Master knows the dog is better than the cat. Master says good dog. Does master say good cat? No. No, master does not. See? The cat gives the dog a long, languid look of carefully disguised contempt. Then she sighs and turns to you. Settle an argument for us. Dog's body here thinks that because the master is grateful for his, meaning the dog's, mindless devotion, he loves his dog more than he loves his cat. I, on the other hand, know full well that it's the master's admiration for my general bearing, demeanor, and intrinsic greatness what is most indicative of a state of actual love. He near worships me, he does. Master loves his dog. Master thinks his cat is cool, not the same thing. You're a moron. No, I'm not. I'm black brown. See what I'm dealing with? Come on, settle the argument. Tell him he's wrong. Dog. Oh, cat. Dog. See what I'm up against here. The animals argue on. Dog. Oh, dog. Can't win, can I?
place. I found something. This door is locked tight, but there's a sliding hatch at ankle height. Grains of sand drift from beneath the door and form the tiniest dunes. Peering in, you can barely see as your vision is limited by a cobweb draped across the hatch. You think you see an empty room carpeted with sand. It's quiet in the room, too quiet. Before you stands the ghost of an older woman. Clad in flowing magister's robes, she peers around the room as if looking for something lost. On seeing you, she brightens and extends an ethereal hand. Magister Pavlonia, charmed to meet you, I'm sure. As she reaches for you, her hand passes right through your arm. She shrieks, horror animating her face. Oh, my hand! Well, really, I'm quite aware of that. But I am not fully myself. I keep forgetting things somehow. It's hard to hold all the threads together when you've fallen apart yourself. Wait, the spider! It was the spider! She chewed me! Bits of me! Slowly! I keep looking, but I can't find myself. I... ah, uh, yes. I came from the Black Pits to... to negotiate with Riker here in his house. We needed to ensure that scoundrel wouldn't interfere with our plans there. He must have mixed something into the delightful rose tea he served me. And then... Then... Ah! Next I knew, I was rolled up in webbing as the... His spider sucked the marrow right from my bones and nibbled my limbs off. I hope you didn't drink any tea downstairs. He's a master sorcerer. Everyone knows that. But he's too powerful to take to the joy. And besides, he had some business that coincided with Dallas's interests. 
Of course, if he were to act up, we could always work on his little vulnerability to fortify. So Dallas ordered him left alone, providing he didn't interfere with Magister business in the Black Pits. She throws you a haughty glance. In the sharp lines of her face, you see steely determination overtaking the spirit's distracted manner. None of your... Never mind. The spider spindles right up to you, her long, long legs tickling the sandy floor. A malevolent intelligence gleams forth from eight beady eyes. She opens her mouth, hissing at you. Don't you know, my little pepper pot, that it's ever such bad manners to enter a queen's boudoir without permission? But what's this? Something familiar beats within your heart? A venom promise. A gift from one of my kind. She shuffles her enormous body closer, looming over you until you are enveloped under her shadow. Venom sizzles to the sand from her fangs as you are pinned in place under all eight of her eyeballs. You come here for me. You desire another spider's kiss. Her eyes glisten, and her distended abdomen jiggles and shakes. Is she laughing at you? How adorable! But I'm not interested in you like that. I've already got plenty of babies. So you are still prey, but of a different kind. I hunger, and I hear my princelings blubbering in their loving cocoons. Time for us to feast. A trade, you say, Poppet? Let Mama see what you have to offer. Could push us through my boudoir door. The spider smacks her mandibles together, making grotesque chewing sounds as she swallows bits of some poor unfortunate. She stretches out one long leg and licks old blood from whatever a spider has instead of toes. In return for your generous offering to your queen, I will tell you a little secret about the one downstairs. He accepted a promise. The promise. And now he wants to weasel his way out of it. Forget it. He used to love me. He used to worship my, my spinnerets. But now he doesn't talk to his queen anymore. He just milks my venom. Well, sweet little Summerberry. You see how he builds his army? 
Now I built my own army. Someday he'll walk in here and face not one spider, but legion. Maybe angel eyes? Bring me three more hunks of meat for my princelings, my sweet, my precious, and I will give you something. Something handmade by yours truly. Let's see, my darling, my little cherry blossom. The spider gathers the limbs beneath her enormous abdomen and reaches out to you. She holds out a tiny clump of silk. For you, some spider silk gloves. These are spun by your very own queen for your very own tiny little limbs. They will protect you from my sisters and brothers out in the world. Now go. My stomach rambles and craves to nibble on your deliciousness. You should leave before I give in to the temptation. You lie back on the riverbank's edge, eyes closed, waiting for the fish to bite. This is the life. You open your eyes to take in the blue skies, but another sight awaits. A gaunt elven face, sliced by a chilling smile. Your loyal dog laps at your face as you fade into void. Would that you had the strength to do more than pat its head and whisper, good boy. He is, was, the only soul you've had reason to ever trust. The pilgrimage takes its toll. You've walked upwards of 20 leagues, yet Arx is 40 more. You sit at the base of a looming statue and sip from your flask, grateful for a moment's rest. You feel tough wood and tougher steel under your claws. You gently sing a song in the old tongue of the lizards, and your chest creaks open. Welcome back, Consul Zara. It hisses as you reach inside, pulling out your fire whip. 
You remember drinking ruby wine with Magister Boris in the armory after hours. You remember his deep hazel eyes, how he trembled as he kissed you. You remember all of it, the best night of your life. You kneel and pray at the stone cross. You know your words go unheard. You know you speak only to soil and bone. But you aren't praying for him. You are praying for you. She hums quietly. The notes move in rhythm with her wandering eyes. The lizard pauses, and a smile crosses her face. Me belongs to me. Servants belong to the hall. That's the way I like it. Her hum returns, soft at first, then blossoming into a full-fledged hymn. Ten spans under, human slept. Ten spans up, the dwarves were kept. To see an elf burning the body of kin, it turns one's stomach.
The spirit ignores your presence, busy as it is resisting the pull of another. The ancestor tree, trying to take its source. All you feel is the spirit's resistance and its anger directed at the mother tree that has betrayed it. The spirit ignores your presence, busy as it is resisting the pull of another. The ancestor tree. Tr the spirit ignores your presence, busy as... The roots of a great ancestor tree reach from deep underground to the surface above and beyond. An undead elf steps from the shadows. He looks powerful, but when he speaks, he is in pain. Welcome, Godwoken, to your grave. I promise you decay. I decay. But if I serve, I grow again. I shall serve him. You must die. He is my friend. He is your king. He wants your decay. Rise, root and branch. Obey your scion. Defeat my enemy. The roots of a great ancestor tree reach from deep underground. Here, God woke up. We all rot.
brutal front. Obey your scion. Defeat my enemy.
I'm ready. Rubbish. A wave of relief washes off the spirit. Relief tempered with disgust. You are an elven spirit. Who you were in life is now forgotten. You have spent the years resisting the pull of the ancestor tree. It would steal your source. This source you would gladly give to the mother tree. But not this traitor. This sign has betrayed the elves. This sign has taken a darker path. This sign wants your source for someone or something else. This, you think, is what happens when the Scions don't get proper training. Relief flows through you as you realize that you may leave. Your thoughts flash to the Mother Tree by the water on an island with no name. The spirit slips away. The spirit looks forlorn, exhausted, spent. Nothing remains of the life you led. The long years after death, resisting the tree as it tried to take your source, have left you with little more than an overwhelming sense of betrayal. Relief flows through you. The spirit slips away. The spirit looks angry. You have been a spirit for a very long time indeed. This afterlife has been spent resisting the pull of the ancestor tree that wants your source. You've always hated the scion of the tree for seeking your destruction. Once he served the hated mother tree, you hate her too. But now, the scion has taken a darker path, but he still wants your source. Relief flows through you as a realization grows. You may leave. The spirit slips away.
If it ain't Francis Philosopher, looks like you recovered from your existential crisis. I hope you find that wisdom you're looking for. Won't be from me. If it isn't Fanny Philosopher, looks like you recovered from your existential crisis.